This year might just be the best year for handhelds in my entire life, probably even ever. And it's weird because I started off the year talking about just how terrible the retro handheld market was. Just release after release of marginal updates, each introducing their own unique problems. And it never seemed to end, just an onslaught of horrible decisions and painfully lackluster devices. They were all so close to being good, with something dumb holding them back. Almost immediately after that video released, we got pelted with fantastic devices. It became overwhelming. I know this hobby can be tough to navigate through. There's a lot of fun and amazing things here, but there's also a lot of duds. It's a minefield. to narrow it down to just five, which is gonna be hard because some weren't even dedicated emulators and they're all wildly different price points. But that's the fun of it, isn't it? With all of these differences, we gotta come out with just one victor. This video is sponsored by Audible. <laughs> Oh man, this project is taking forever. Oh yeah, man, same. I was writing it and then an update pushed, so I gotta change it. Oh wow, that's crazy. It'll be fine, I'll figure it out. Ah, no way, man. What? Nah, that's a huge L. What? Oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Oh, were you listening to anything I just said? Oh, no, I've been over here listening to Audible. Thank God. I've been listening to Reggie fils new book, Disrupting the Game. Did you know that he hated the Game Boy Micro? What? That's blasphemy. What's up, Reggie fils -Amy? No, he doesn't do that. You should check out Audible. They have an incredible selection of audiobooks across all different genres. From bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. They even have podcasts. You know, the Wolf Den podcast, the Nintendo podcast. You might have heard of those. Oh, yeah, I don't know who that is. You don't know who that is? Oh, is that the one with that uh, Wood Hawker guy? Yeah, the Wood Hawker guy. Yeah, I've seen those clips on TikTok. Anyway, let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash wolfden, spelled just like that, or text wolfden to 500-500. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're gonna do it? Yeah, the Wii U was never gonna work. Give me my phone back. Hey! In the past week, I've had two different people come up to me in real life and ask me what the best portable emulator is to get, as if that's a simple one word answer. It's complicated. Why else would I spend over 20 minutes talking about just one in a video? Of course, it depends on what you're looking for in a console. If you don't care about GameCube emulation, you'd save yourself potentially hundreds of dollars. So the number one in this video might not necessarily be the one for you. If you're at all interested in this world, I'd suggest considering all of the different devices that I talk about and all of the things that I say about all of them in this video. I'm gonna start with number five, and that is the Retroid Pocket 3. I want this one to be number one so bad. It's probably the one that I suggest the most to people or close to. The price point is fantastic, it's super easy to set up and use, and it's powerful, playing all the way up to N64 and DS pretty well. I love the form factor, I played this a lot. I got a lot of perfect dark done on this thing. There's two major issues keeping this thing locked at fifth place. I talk about this a lot in the video that I made on this thing, but word on the street is that they made this thing about two years ago, and they've just had thousands of them laying around in a warehouse somewhere. So they had to move units. 
Also, they cut a lot of costs on the manufacturing, which is why this thing was only $130 when I got it. At first, I didn't seem to have any issues. The thing seems well built. I don't think there's any manufacturing issues, but just a few weeks after that original video, the home button stopped working. And it's not like a normal stopped working. It's stuck in the firing position. It's, it's always being held down. And not like the button is physically stuck. It's just always firing. It's broken. And that shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it causes it to be stuck in a boot loop every time you turn the thing on. So it's completely unusable. I contacted Retroid via their customer support and their suggestion was to open it up and replace the button. They sent me a video of just a complete teardown of the device. I don't know what they wanted me to do with that information. Yeah, I could do that, but it, should I have to? It's very strange for a brand new device to come out and there's a problem with it and the company just goes, yeah, just replace the part by yourself. That's very strange. What's even weirder is that the fucking thing came with extra buttons like they knew this was gonna happen. The second reason this thing isn't number one is because just a few months after the release of the Retroid Pocket 3, they released the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, which plays GameCube games very well. It's barely any more money and it doesn't have these manufacturing issues as far as I can tell. The only reason that that isn't on this list in place of this is because I still haven't gotten mine, even though I pre-ordered it like the second the pre-orders became available. I don't know where it is. And even if I did have it in my hand, I'd probably still lock it at number five because I don't know what those manufacturing issues are, are gonna be like. Issues could just sneak up on you like they did with this thing. Also, that device shouldn't even exist. I shouldn't have to buy a whole new device just a few months after the release of the first one that's way better and only a couple bucks more. That's anti-consumer. So I like the Retroid Pocket 3 and the 3 Plus in theory, but they're holding themselves back with poor manufacturing, poor customer service, and anti-consumerism by releasing just too many products way too close to each other. Number two is a little bit more practical, and that's the Analog Pocket. Now, this came out last year, so you might be wondering why it's on this list. Well, most people haven't gotten theirs till just this year. In a post-COVID world, devices are doing like a slow rollout as they ramp up manufacturing. So to most people, this is a 2022 release. But more importantly, this thing wasn't really an emulator last year. This year, there's been a ton of different updates that make this thing a powerhouse of a portable emulator. At launch, you couldn't play ROMs on it. This year, there were a bunch of updates and homebrews that made it possible to play from the Pocket's micro SD card slot. The last update being the best and probably the end all be all. A recent firmware update unlocks the second FPGA core and users quickly got to work porting FPGA cores over. We ended up with Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, Genesis, and more. And it's probably the simplest emulator to set up and keep updated. All you have to do is use a computer to place one file on your micro SD card, run the script, and then it'll update everything you'll need. Pop that micro SD card back into your analog pocket and it'll update automatically and you're ready to go. Of course, you'll need to bring your own ROMs, but that's usually the case for these types of things. The analog pocket is the easiest to use, but it's also the sleekest and prettiest portable emulator you can get. It's like a work of art. For a device that can only play up to SNES games, it is a little bit pricey at $220 now. And it's also perpetually out of stock. You're gonna hear that a lot in this video. If you pre-order one right now, you will be in Group C of 2023, whatever that means. They are ramping up production. Things aren't as dire as they were before, but it's still up in the air when you're gonna get the thing that you paid for. This thing is kind of like a, a collector's item. It's like an art piece. This thing is for 
enthusiasts who understand what makes FPGA really exciting and also what makes it not that exciting. Well, retro enthusiasts with $220 burning a hole in their pockets and a lot of patience. If you've been here before, my number three pick might surprise you a little bit because I've frequently talked about how this is my favorite portable emulator out right now. It's the Ein Odin. My opinion on this has changed only slightly. It is still one of the best portable emulators you can get. It might be the best if you're gonna play some GameCube games. The Ein Odin is an absolute powerhouse and makes the most practical sense if you're looking for a dedicated portable retro handheld that can play all the way up to GameCube and PlayStation 2 and play them well. It is incredibly easy to set up, and the form factor is basically that of a Switch Lite. It's amazing what this thing's capable of. This device single-handedly restored my faith in the retro handheld market, which is incredible because this was Ein's first release ever. What I have here is the Ein Odin Pro, which you can get for yourself for around $300, and you probably know what I'm about to say. It's uh, perpetually out of stock. I do give Ein a lot of credit for not flooding the market with releases after the success of this one, their first release, but they did kind of flood the market at release with a bunch of different options. They are coming out with a Windows version called the Ein Loki, which is even more confusing because there are a lot more options for that one too. I don't love that. But the Odin surprised me more than anything I've used this year. It was the first device of the year that was a breeze to set up. And it's a fantastic pick for playing your entire retro collection, not just the powerful 3D stuff. It's easy to call it the best dedicated portable emulator, but it's the price that makes it hard to recommend. And also the scarcity, let's not forget about that. $300 makes sense for a device that can play GameCube and PlayStation 2 games very well. In fact, I would call that kind of a deal. It's just not exactly an entry level price and also hard to recommend when the number two pick is just a couple bucks more and offers way, way more. Yeah, you might've guessed it already by the way things are going in this video. It's the Steam Deck. I pulled like a full 180 on the Steam Deck. I guess when it was coming out, I was a little lukewarm on it because everybody just kept pinning it against the Switch. And this would never take away Nintendo's market share, not in a long shot, but it does take away a lot of valuable playtime away from my Nintendo Switch. I've been using it way differently than I was ever expecting to. It's the smaller games, the usually indie stuff that either releases on Steam first or just runs a lot better on the Steam Deck than it would on the Switch. It's great to not have to wait for an eShop release in order to play some of these great games. Sometimes by the time it comes out on the eShop, I forget that I ever even wanted to play that game. Also, being able to bounce cloud saves between the Steam Deck and the PC is awesome. I never expected to like that as much as I do. But this is supposed to be about the emulation capabilities. This thing isn't a dedicated portable emulator, but it can become one very easily. Not as easily as an analog pocket, but it's almost just that easy. Just boot into the Linux desktop, download that emulation station installer and run it and that's it. It's gotten a lot easier recently. This will allow you to play all the way up to GameCube and PlayStation 2 very smoothly. Just a little bit better than an Ein Odin 2. The cheapest Steam Deck is $400. This one was $530, so it's still a decent amount of money. The, the Ein Odin that I just talked about was only $300. But keep in mind that this thing can also play a lot of new releases, a lot of big graphically intensive AAA stuff. This thing is a whole ass console on top of being a powerhouse of an emulation device. With a bit of work, it can also emulate PS3 and Switch games. It's a well-supported powerhouse that's worth for the extra couple bucks, and it's more readily available. 
If you purchase one of these things right now, it will be ready in just one to two weeks, which is way better than anything else on this list. Think about that. There are five devices and these are the best of the year and one to two weeks is the best you're gonna get. The only problems I have with the Steam Deck is that it's kind of huge and cumbersome. It's very comfortable, but it's not exactly practical to just throw in your bag and take with you. This next one though, that's why it's number one. Yeah, if you've been here before, you've probably deduced which device it is by now. It's the Playdate. Just kidding, it's the Miu Mini version two. This is not the most powerful device on this list, and it's not the best at emulation, but it's only $60 and it can fit in your pocket, but like actually fit in your pocket. This thing is tiny. Because of this, the form factor isn't exactly the most comfortable for playing long sessions, but it's a necessary trade-off for how easy it is to bring this thing with you. The best game console is the one that you have with you. This thing never leaves my bag. It's also made way better by the homebrewed Onion OS, which is also incredibly easy to flash and install. It's also as simple as just plopping a file onto the micro SD card and booting the thing up. It makes games run smoother, the UI easier to navigate, it lets you swap between games seamlessly, it also lets you easily hit save states and just sleep the whole system when you've hit your stop on the train. It's the single most convenient portable emulator I've used all year. The screen is also gorgeous and the emulation quality is fantastic. It can only play up to PlayStation 1 well, but it's also only $60, so take what you can get. It's just, of course, perpetually out of stock. Retro Game Corps will frequently tweet whenever they are available again on AliExpress. They're also up on Amazon for about double the listing price if you're really hurting for one. This is probably what I'd suggest to most people who are trying to get into portable emulation. Hell, this is what I would suggest even if you already have a portable emulator. You're looking for something that's more portable, more practical, something you can just throw in your bag and forget about. It. It's a great companion to the Steam Deck or even an Ein because it's even smaller than that. It's just a great thing to have around, period. And it's fun to use because of that. Plus, I recently learned there's like a lot of mods you can do on these popular handheld emulators. The back buttons, the shoulder buttons, really aren't that great on this thing. They kind of suck like a lot. You can get new shoulder buttons that stick out more and are easier to press. Frequently, the only ones that are in stock are the terrible color schemes. You can get new face plates and new button colors to pop in there. That's something I want to explore in a future video. So what do you guys think about all of these different portable emulators and handhelds that came out this year? Handhelds that allow you to play all of your ROM collection. Which one has been your favorite this year? Was there anything that stuck out to you in this video? And if you want to see more about any of the devices I talked about, I have a video on each one. I'll link a playlist right here and at the end of the video so you can watch it when we're done here. Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. Hey. Over on twitch.tv slash wolfden this month, I've been giving away something every single time I go live. So head on over there. I just gave away a Miu Mini. It's, I'm usually giving away like gift cards and stuff. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here and turn on notifications when you want to know when every single one of these new videos goes live. Like for example, when I talk about the mods for these things and share this video with a friend. A friend who is trying to get into this stuff and doesn't know which one to get. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.